Hello again, internet community. Adzi here, back on the workbench. Now, this video is probably going to upset quite a few people out there, but I'm gonna make it anyway. Now, this gun is the current one I'm working on, and I've done one just before this, and I've now done a second one absolutely identical. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna put a little bit of a, a video footage together of what I'm up to, and why I kind of disagree with what's going on here. Now, I'm sure a lot of you watching this already know that this here, up here, because that won't push in any further, that's literally where that sits. So I'm sure you're all familiar with the term AOE correction, or angle of engagement correction. Now, I am not a fan of this, and in this video, I'm gonna show you all why I don't like it especially as I've just done two guns which have had exactly the same issue um, on the back of this being a, a supposedly the right thing to do. However, I disagree and I'm going to show you exactly why in as much detail as I can. Now, we all know what AOE correction is, but for those of us that perhaps don't, let me take the cylinder off so we can see. Now, I'm going to put that in there. So you see that? That's a cylinder head. So that has got all that additional kind of, is it sorbo padding? I think they call them, isn't it, on the back there. So that's gonna sit at the front. What that then means is that when that piston sits in and it's in there, it sits and it buffs up against that like that. Now what that causes is rather than this being able to sit that little bit further forward, like it would in kind of a standard gun, it's done so that that is picked up at a completely kind of 12 o'clock position. Now, the reason I understand people think they should do it is because that that picking up on that tooth there is then at a 12 o'clock position, which means when that tooth engages with the bottom tooth on the piston there, it's a night flat surface. So great, yeah, that picks up and then that takes your piston back um, is fine. So. Because apparently, when it's forward here, that's an issue. Now, here's my problem. And when we look at this here, so this piston is the piston that come out of the other gun. So very, very similar piston. Same thing where we've had two teeth cut off it, or two teeth on that one because it had the extra one to begin with, whereas that one was missing one anyway, and whoever's done it has cut that one off. So two identical things. Now, I'm gonna point out on here, can you see that this one here is all shiny? So it's really shiny, really shiny, competitors, and of course that shine dissipates to get down here. Now, each of those teeth on this piston have been used equally. With every cycle of the gun, it goes through every single teeth. So why is that one, especially that one, worn more than the rest of them? I'm gonna show you. Now, same with this one. Um, there's quite a bit of grease in there, but again, it's worn more here than it is down the rest of it. So as you can see, now here's why, and here's why I don't like this whole AOE with Sorbo pads correction. And that is because, let's say that is in there. Now I'm gonna push forward on this piston as if it's under load like it would be constantly with the spring in there. Now, as we rotate these gears, so that's gonna come round. Now, as we know, we've taken the two teeth off so that that tooth can find its way back, all the way back here. So if we come back here, so far so good, we're picking that up, yeah? Picked up, great. Now, watch what happens next. As I rotate this gear here, the bit we're gonna focus on is how that tooth now engages with the tooth that's gonna pick it up, because of course we've skipped these two teeth, haven't we? So watch this. As that comes round, that engages there. Now. At this point in the gearbox cycle, we've got a bit of load now under the piston. We're bringing it back, so we've got more tension from the spring. Now, the problem we've got here is that is at an angle that's pushing that back further, which now means the supposed problem we've corrected with this tooth by pushing it back is now happening here on a smaller tooth with the spring under more tension than it was in its relaxed position. So let's see what happens. If I push that back and I rotate that with that under load, can you see that that is wanting to lift? That's lifting the piston. I can feel it doing it. So as I'm coming back here, 
And that is engaging incorrectly now on this tooth. So that as we come round, that is wanting to now lift the piston. And it's that there that is causing the wear on that tooth. It is causing the wear on that tooth. So it baffles me as to why that is a good idea. Now I see this all the time. This is the first time I've ever thought I'm gonna put a video together. And it's purely because I've had two identical them, one after the other. So if I'm missing something, Pop it in the comments below, because my understanding is we're making the problem that we're getting there, we're supposedly fixing that problem from the first tooth, which on all the builds I've ever done in all the years I've done this, I've never seen it an issue with that when that sits further forward. There. Now, so if I bring this in, okay, so this is one I prepared kind of for this demonstration of how I would normally do it, just as a comparison. So we've seen what happens with the teeth and they're picking it up like that. So if we remove all of this, so let's get that out of the way and we put a more normal cylinder head. Now that's just come from the old Bix, that one. That's not one of the uh, fancy upgrade ones or anything super duper like that, but it doesn't have all the Sorbo pads on it. Now, if I put this in, which is a piston I made earlier, what I would always do with them is, you have one, uh, and if it's got a full rack on it, you would cut that tooth down about halfway. The reason you need to do that is because it allows that clearance to come through. Um, so what that's gonna do is, as that picks it up, and you can come back a, a touch if you needed to, you don't have to have it all the way forward, you could adjust, I suppose, a smidgen. But the idea is that when this picks that up and that rotates round, that, as that picks it up, is going to engage so much smoother. Look at that. There is no snagging. There is no resistance. So we're not fixing what I consider to be, to an extent, a made-up problem. Obviously, if that was sitting so far forward in your gun, then yes, you do have to do something about it. But it does not need to be 12 o'clock. You hit up here. Obviously, we can see that's an issue. Somewhere around here is absolutely fine with a normal cylinder head providing you can get that additional tooth in. That's the bit that I feel is important because by doing that, we're utilizing all of the teeth by that point. This one here, so if I can get my little pointer in, this one here is now doing some assistance in bringing that piston back smoothly. So it's gonna pull that like so. Therefore, there is no lifting up or pushing the piston upwards or anything. Therefore, if you are wanting a smooth gearbox build, without any resistance, that is my preferred way of doing it because it is the smoothest way I have managed to find to do it. Okay, it's been a few weeks actually since I started the initial recording. I just never got to edit the full video, but it does give me an opportunity to put this one into the video as well. This is obviously a slightly different style of piston, but again, um, perhaps not as obvious. However, just to show it one more time with a different set of gears, a different piston, obviously that's going to pick up, so it's going to pick up there. So great, fine. As we move forward, now it won't be quite so apparent in the video of what's happening at the front here, but as that tooth there stops and good. I can still, I can feel a resistance. That resistance will be visible, I think, in the video on the back here. So watch what happens as we rotate that around, as that engages, as that tries to find its place, can you see the gap that's now opening? Let's see if I can hold these. Look at the gap that's opening between this back tooth that was originally the initial pickup and this one here. Because what's happening is as that's going back here, because we haven't got the teeth here to continue um, the piston coming back evenly, we're still at this point relying on this until here. Now this tooth here that's now trying to pick up is not picking up quite in the right place on that, so we've compressed that spring. That is now fighting to pick up, and as it does it, it pushes the piston back more than what the gear is rotating by a fraction, which is why, if I move my fingers out of the way, when that's there, you can now see a gap. I don't know if I've even got anything that will slide in there. Look, literally, if I get a bit of packaging, I can put that between the two. Look, so we've got, can you see that in there? That's a gap 
that gap is there because that poor tooth here is now struggling and having to reposition itself after it's been taken back, bumps into it, pushes the piston back further than what the thing's doing. So yeah, again, we're, we're moving the supposed problem from here down to here when it's under load. I'm still really confused as to why everyone's doing this. When I say everyone, I hear about it so much when I'm walking around airsoft sites and you see about it on Facebook and things where people are commenting that your AOE's out. And I, I don't know. I see so much of this. Again, there's another one. Hopefully, at some point, I will have got this edited and you guys on YouTube will have been able to watch it. If you're watching it, that will have happened. But uh, other than that, hope that's useful. Hope we can learn something from that. Love to hear your thoughts on it, either in support of what I've shown us or against what we've shown us. Maybe I'm missing something. If I'm missing something on all of this, teach me. Show me. Obviously, I, I just want, I, I need to know if I'm doing something myself wrong. But from what I can see here on so many things, I keep seeing the same issue. I don't know what else to say on the matter, really. I'm baffled as to why. That's such a, I suppose, a, a common thing I see people talking about. Um, to supposedly make your gearbox run smoother when, looking at that, look at it. It clearly doesn't. So yeah, other than that, rant over. Um, hopefully you've learned something, maybe it's useful. Maybe I'm gonna upset the airsoft internet community so much, everyone's gonna delete my page off YouTube. I don't know. But in the meantime, like the video or dislike it on this occasion. I'm expecting it to get a little bit of hate. Um, but do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all in the next one.